Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Welcome again to our online sessions. Great to see everybody here. So this is uh, session number four. And uh, let me move on. Okay. Hold on. My thing doesn't want to move on. <laughs> Hold on. That's better. Okay. So, and um, today, in a way, it's still continuing our introduction. There's lots of introduction to astronomy. We're going to be looking at astronomy tools. Uh, and as usual, there'll be some discussion. Um, uh, there'll be some, uh, like an activity that you can do. We'll do a demo of some software and uh, then we'll have some like fun facts and astronomy news as well towards the end. Oh, but before we start, uh, remember last week um, there was a like a, a, a puzzle, a word search puzzle that, that Solomon gave you. And uh, and this was actually sent in, at, well, Solomon, maybe you should say because this came to you. I think didn't, so, so somebody, one of you sent in their completed puzzle. Is that right? Yes. So um, I'm just trying to remember the name. I'm sorry I'm not good with names, so I don't really remember. But I think I replied an email um, to acknowledge that we have received it and it's a really good work. So perhaps I'll find out at the end, I mean, towards the end, I'll mention the person's name um, so that we can all acknowledge um, the tax that has been completed. Yeah, so well done, well done. I mean, I'm sure that, and I know obviously there may have been others of you that finished, but you may not have sent it in, but well done to everybody. Um, and just one small thing I wanted to say, um, if we do give you a link to something like this word search puzzle, if it's not your own uh, phone or device or laptop you're using, please always ask permission to go and uh, use another uh, website. Or, or, you know, sometimes it might be a download. Please always ask. So we don't want to be get into trouble with your parents or guardians. So <laughs> please remember that. So well done to everybody, whoever did the word search last week. OK, so today, astronomy tools. We're going to be talking about what are some of the common astronomy tools, um, some astronomy software, different software and apps that you can use for astronomy, and to also know how these different tools are important, not just in astronomy, but generally in, in society. So let's start off. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys. So. We talk about astronomy tools. So what tools do astronomers use? Does anybody uh, know of any tools that astronomers use? So you can either uh, type it in the chat or you can unmute and say if you think. What, what do astronomers use to do their work? What do you think? We've all gone very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone knows what an astronomer is, yes? Or shall I, shall we check with that? So an, an astronomer is somebody. Oh, Sarah, I just uh, yes. I just got um, a message from the um, the group. Um, so Bradley is saying a telescope. Okay, um, good. Also, um, Colleen Thompson also says telescopes. Okay. Good. Telescopes, yes, definitely. Anything else? Do, can you think of anything else that an astronomer might use? Because we do tend to have this picture of somebody, you know, with a telescope to their eye and we think, okay, that, that's an astronomer, that's what they do. But nowadays, as you'll see in the slides that come up, you know, the technology has changed a lot. So there, there's actually a lot of different tools that astronomers use. So yes, definitely telescopes. They also use something called a spectrograph. Now what this does is uh, it's an instrument you can attach to a telescope and it analyzes the light that comes through the telescope. And it can actually tell you the, uh, the types of elements or chemicals that are in the light that you're looking at, or in, well, let me put that a better way. Uh, if you're looking at a, a star, there are different elements, chemicals in the atmosphere of the star, and the spectrograph can actually help you identify those, which is quite 
incredible, really. Uh, so there's a lot that we can find out by using a telescope and a spectrograph. Um, now, uh, in the old days, people used to look through the telescope and make sketches by hand of what they saw. Very painstaking. Every night they'd look to see how things changed and moved and so on. Nowadays, we use cameras so that the information can be stored automatically and then you can, you can look at the, the pictures later. Um, some telescopes are in space, so you need spacecraft to take them. And you, we have observatories, basically the, like a, the building that houses a telescope and computers. Um, there is a lot of IT in astronomy these days. If you're interested in astronomy at all, you need to be interested in IT as well, because the two now are, are, are very closely linked. So your ICT at school, you, you need to make sure you're, you're keeping up with that. Um, there's different types of telescopes um, that use, look at different types of light or what are called different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now we'll actually be talking about that in another session, so you don't have to worry too much about it. But just to be aware that there are many different types of telescopes. So I talked about the uh, computers. So here are some pictures. You might think they look quite funny. So up here, back in the day, this is what computers used to look like, this big clonky looking thing on the desk. And here's an old printer. You know what, I'm showing my age. I remember using a printer like this, a dot matrix printer. <laughs> it used to make a real noise, like that. <laughs> and then um, even this that looks quite old, this was in its day was a supercomputer. You can see at the back, there's all sorts of um, machines at the back here. So it's a very a huge, very powerful machine. But the technology um, has advanced so quickly that now a modern laptop, maybe the same laptop you're using, could easily have the same power or more than this whole room full of computers. In fact, your laptop, in fact, maybe even a phone might even have more computing power than the computers that sent the people to the moon. So, you know, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. It's about 50 years ago. I mean, it was an incredible achievement, but the computers that they use then are like nothing compared to what we have now. It's quite amazing. So technology is really changing. This weird thing over on the right is, an, is a modern type of supercomputer. So it doesn't even really look like what we might think of as a computer, but uh, as I said, te technology is changing. And we'll talk about this. This is related to a project called the SKA. So we'll talk about that a bit later. So we definitely use computers. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Now let's go back to, to telescopes. Uh, I'm just thinking, is uh, uh, are you just seeing my whole screen or are you seeing it, are the little thumbnails at the side getting in the way? No, so we are seeing the whole screen. With okay, okay. Everything. right, that's fine, uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so now, who has heard of Galileo? Galileo Galilei. Can, can anybody tell me something about Galileo? I read it in a book. Okay, what, what did you read about Galileo? He was like, because he believed that the world orbited around the sun, he was put in prison. And yes. he still didn't stop believing that the world orbited around the sun. So they kept him in his house. He couldn't go out, like imprisoned in his house. That's true. That's very good. Yes, he was, put, they call it being under house arrest. So you're in your house, yes. which you, you might think Sorry, is okay. Yes. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. You might think it's okay. But imagine if someone told you, well, you can't go out at all. You'd, you'd soon get fed up at work. So it's a bit like coronavirus lockdown, maybe. <laughs> You get a bit fed up. So yes, very good. He, he, because what he said at the time, it was different to what everyone believed. And so it was against what, if it was against what the church said and the church was very powerful. And so they didn't like what he was saying. So yes, very good. Anything else about, does anyone else know anything else about Galileo? Does anyone have anything else to add? All right, so- He Carly. was a famous he was a historical astronomer who made the first telescope. Okay, he was a very famous astronomer. 
Um, a lot of people say he made the first telescope or invented the telescope. He didn't actually. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's a long time ago, so sometimes history, we're not always terribly sure, but it's thought that the telescope was actually invented by somebody else who, and it was almost like a novelty or something you could just use, you know, on a ship to look at distances. But people like Galileo, astronomers immediately realized, wow, this thing is going to be fantastic for astronomy. So Galileo was one of the first to, uh, to find out how that telescope was made and he made his own. And he made a much better one than the person who invented it. Uh, and, he, and he used it for astronomy. Um, and he, he, he documented a lot of what he did. He published, he, he did so many sketches and wrote a lot and wrote books about what he saw. So that's why we all, we tend to associate him and the first telescopes. But uh, we don't think he was the inventor, but he was one of the first people to use a telescope for astronomy. And that's what made him very famous. So yeah, so telescopes really changed everything. Um, over on the left is another instrument called a sexton that they used to use for measuring uh, positions of stars. And on the right, that's actually a photograph of two of his Galileo's first um, telescopes, which are now in a museum somewhere. Sorry, I can't remember where it is. So, so and remember a few weeks, or a couple of weeks ago, Solomon showed you how to make a telescope with lenses. So really, it's basically just lenses and a tube. I um, forgot to oh, join. You've forgotten what? I forgot to join that meeting. OK, I think, well, everything's on YouTube, so you can always go back and, and look at it later. So from there, since then, te technology always improves. So now we have uh, some very smart modern telescopes. Uh, in fact, the most modern ones nowadays use mirrors. They have a mirror and a lens rather than two lenses. And instead of everything having to be done by hand, you can use computers to control the telescope, to control where it moves so it finds exactly what you're looking for. And as I said, you can also have cameras to take pictures. So uh, the, this one in the middle with the guy with the hat is the telescope we have here at the planetarium. And over on the right uh, is a telescope used by a group in Kenya. You see, it's actually a very uh, big telescope. And if you can see, you know, it's like there's like space here. It doesn't have to be an enclosed tube. Um, there's a mirror down at the bottom and a lens up here. So sometimes they, they don't even, you wouldn't think it is a telescope, but it's a telescope. So a lot of things have, have changed. Um, and now you can even put telescopes in what's called an array. In other words, instead of just having one telescope, you can have a whole group of them that work together and that makes them much more powerful. Um, so this is a, an array called ALMA in Chile, I think. And this is called the VLA in uh, America. So here's a question. So the name of this group here is called the VLA. So what do you think VLA stands for? Your guess is VLA. It's a it's a telescope array. Remember, that's my clue. And it's very big. <laughs> what do you think VLA might stand for? So you can put it in the chat if you yeah. want to type it. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we'll go on, and then you'll we'll come back to that one. So you can think about that. So we have telescope arrays. Um, then we said observatories. So a, an observatory is really the building that houses the telescope. Over here, you see this beautiful dome. And this part here actually opens up. So this part can, can open up. It's like a door that opens up so that the telescope can then point at the sky. And did you know that we have an observatory in Ghana? Over on the right, this is the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory. So it's what's called a radio telescope not like the ones with the lenses, it's different, it looks at radio waves. And it's, it's, it's just north of Accra, it's on the Kumasi Road, Kuntunsi, um, uh, just past Pukwasi. You can go and visit it, it's really impressive. That dish is 32 metres across, it's huge. When you see it, you just go, wow, it's really fantastic. So we have observatories. Now, this is the biggest telescope in the world. So we're looking at extreme telescopes now. This dish 
is 500 meters across. That's half a kilometer. I mean, that would take you a while to walk from one end to the other. It's enormous. It's in China. It's quite recent. It was quite recently uh, uh, completed. So really amazing because basically the bigger the telescope, the more powerful it is and therefore the more it can see. It can see fainter objects and objects that are further away. So we can find out more and more with a bigger telescope. Okay, here's another, if you like, extreme telescope. So here's another quiz. This is called the VLT. What do you think that stands for? All right, so Sarah, we have an answer for the um, VLA. Okay. Uh, so it's, it was sent in by Kwekuchun. Okay. And it says very large array. Very good, yeah. So VLA stands for very large array. So what do you think VLT stands for? So we have an answer to yes. uh, from uh, the Aquas, Aqua Home or some yeah, Aqua Home. Okay. And it says very large telescope. Yeah. Very good. Yes, stands for very large telescope. That's a really boring name, isn't it? I mean, can you imagine? Look at these fantastic things. These four telescopes, the mirrors inside are eight meters across, and they call it VLT, very large telescope. I think that's very disappointing. Anyway, here is another telescope. It's being built. It hasn't been built yet. The mirror inside is going to be 30 meters across, and it's called the ELT. What do you think the name of that is? What do you think ELT stands for? Yes, the ACAS. Me, me, please. Yes. Extremely large telescope. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's the extremely large telescope. <laughs> it's such a boring name, honestly. Couldn't they come up with something better? Unbelievable. Anyway, so there we go. So there are some really huge telescopes being built. And then what else can we do? We can put telescopes in space. Um, now, the reason that's important is, you know how we say twinkle, twinkle, little star? and you look up and you see the stars do seem to sort of twinkle when you look at them. That's actually because of our atmosphere. Remember we talked about the atmosphere the other day, um, that it's layers of gases. And those gases are, you know, they're moving, there's hot parts, there's cold parts, they're swirling around, and that disrupts what you're seeing. So when you have a telescope on the ground, it has to look through all this atmosphere, which which can spoil what you're trying to see. But if you can put a telescope in space, it's above the atmosphere and it gets a much clearer image. So this is something, a, a telescope called the Hubble Space Telescope. It's been in space for over 30 years. It launched in 1990 and it's still producing fantastic images. The mirror is not huge. It's only about two meters uh, and it's about 550 kilometers above the earth. So it's like a bit higher than the International Space Station. Uh, but there's a new telescope being built, it hasn't been launched yet, hopefully next year, called the James Webb Space Telescope. So it's got these, the mirrors made of these um, hexagons all put together. Uh, and it's about, the mirror is about six meters, but this thing is going to be one and a half million kilometers away from the Earth. One and a half million kilometers. Now the Hubble when it was first launched, there was a problem with it. When the images first came, they were all blurry and they found there was a big mistake and it was a huge embarrassment. But luckily, because it was on, only 500 kilometers away, the astronauts could go get in the space shuttle and go up to the International Space Station and they could actually get hold of the, the space telescope and repair it. And that's what they did. And since then, Hubble has produced these fantastic images. But the James Webb, if anything goes wrong with that, it's one and a half million kilometers away. There's no way we can get to it. So they have to be, those people have to be very, very sure that they're doing a good job, which I'm sure they are. So that's the James Webb. Okay, and obviously to get into space, you need these space rockets. Um, and, you know, think of, you know, the, the, the telescope's been gonna be put in a little thing up here and it's blasted off into space. They have to test it against all the kind of shaking and rattling that will happen at launch and all the extremes of temperatures. It's quite amazing that these things even get to space. Um, and nowadays we have private companies like SpaceX um, that are also now uh, building rockets. Uh, so it's more like a commercial, commercial companies. So it's very exciting, all these different things that are happening. Oh, okay. 
so yes, so we looked at different telescopes, observatories and so on. Um, now there are other tools, uh, software that you can use. Um, uh, astronomers use a lot of different software for analyzing the information they get. You, the images, you can process it in different ways. But even if you like us, you know, amateur astronom ast ast astronomers, <laughs> can't even say it. <laughs> um, there's different software you can use. So there's a software called Stellarium, uh, which shows you the night sky from your location. So if you want to start learning what's in the night sky so that when you look up you can say oh yes that's Saturn or that's a star called Sirius or that's something then these softwares are, are, are very very useful. Um, Stellarium is one that you can download onto your computer but there are others that you can use on the, the, the mobile phone which we'll also have a look at. Um, can I just check uh, Solomon how much longer do we have? You're, you're muted by the way. Oh, it's 20. Okay, we've got still got about 10 minutes or so, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's fine. Uh, now, what I'm going to actually, I will stop sharing and then I'll reshare because I think I wasn't on Stellarium. So let me stop. Uh, let me just check. I've got some Stellarium. Yes. Okay. So let me share. Okay. So Stellarium, as I said, it's a free software. You can download it on your laptop. There is an, um, a phone version, but I think it's paid. I think it's not free, unfortunately, but the one on for your laptop, you can download for free. So when you open it up, this is what it, or it will show you something like this. Um, I don't know if it's very clear, but it's mine it's set for wherever you are. When you start, you have to tell it your location. So here you can type in your location. It starts off, it's always in France because the person who, who wrote it is from France. So you just put your location there so that it means it's gonna show you the night sky for your location. And you can see it has the cardinal points here. So south and I can move around, southwest, west, okay. And that's very useful because for example, me from my house, I can have a very good view looking south and east. Uh, it's, it's kind of quite clear, but looking north and west, that's where the house is. So I can't see much north and west. So for me, I will always go and see what's in the south and the east. Uh, oh, the moon is up, interesting. Uh, but you can move around to the different, different directions. Now, the other good thing about Stellarium is it's like a time machine. I can control time. <laughs> so right now it's showing me the time, the time now, which is about half past one. So we don't see anything in the sky. Well, maybe sometimes you can see the moon, apart from obviously the sun. Um, now, don't think that the things are gone. The, the stars and everything are still there because actually I can turn off the atmosphere. And when I do that, then you can see all sorts of things in the sky. So it's, our, it's the light of the sun and our atmosphere that's scattering all the light, which is why we can't see the stars in the daytime, but they're still there. Okay. But what can I can- Can you mention their name? Uh, sorry? Can you spell their name? Can you spell their name? The name of the software? Yes, yes please. Uh, it's Stellarium. S-T-E-L-L like still a r i u m thanks me he's going to say it again stellar oh you mean spell it again or oh maybe um uh, uh solomon can you put it in chat i've actually done that oh, okay <laughs> privately so let me just send it to everybody okay so solomon will put the spelling in the chat so i'm going to speed up time and what you should see, you can see the moon moving and then you should see things start to go dark. Come on, let me speed up a bit more. Oh, there we go. Now what time is that? Okay. Beautiful. That's right, the night sky, very beautiful. Now, unfortunately, if you live in Accra, the night sky probably doesn't look like that because we have what's called light pollution from all the street lights and house lights. And so you can probably only see a few of the brightest stars. But if you were to go somewhere away from the city, 
um, it, you will see a fantastic night sky. So I know people tend not to be traveling much these days, but if you get the chance to go somewhere, you know, maybe visiting relatives in the village or maybe down at the beach, you should find the night sky is much, much better and you can really see a lot of stars, it's fantastic. So let me go across. This is what the night sky will look like this evening. Yes. Um, when I went to search on it, um, it gave me games instead of the app. Okay, you know what? Let's let's come back to that. We'll we'll deal with that a bit later. Let's let's finish what we're looking at, um, and we'll we'll help you with that later. Yeah. Ma'am, please. How does the app recognize where the stars are? Well, that's a good question. It's because the motion of our planet and all the other planets and all the other stars, they actually follow certain rules. Now, who likes maths? <laughs> I'm glad some people say they like maths. This is all to do with maths. There are laws and rules and mathematical equations which govern how the things move. And because of that, it means you can put all those laws and equations and maths into a computer program, you know, if you're clever enough, and you can, and that's how you can work out, oh, depending on where you are this is what you will see because everything moves according to the laws of physics and mathematical equations and everything so that's how they can do it but it is it is quite amazing so later okay hold on, hold on. so uh, so i just sent it to the group if you have any question or something i want us to wait um when we get to the question section that we can ask and then i mean uh, have fun with it Sorry, what did you just say? Please, why did you just send it? Uh, I think in the chat, Solomon's just saying, if you've got questions, please put them in the chat. Okay, thank so you. So it's great that you've got lots of questions. We love the questions, but let, let's, let's do a bit more of the demo. <laughs> so this evening, really straight after sunset, if you look to the sort of between the west and the southwest, so you know west is where the sun uh, sets so so from your house you should know where which direction the sun sets maybe it's over that tree maybe it's over your gate I don't know look in that direction after sunset and you should see two bright they'll look like two bright stars you just two bright dots but it's two planets Jupiter and Saturn so in this software a big dot means it's brighter and a small dot means it's less bright. Jupiter is pretty bright. Saturn is actually not that bright. Um, so they're over to the west. They, they will set, you know, within an hour or so of sunset. So don't leave it till like nine o'clock. They'll probably have gone by then. And then further up, you'll see the moon. Okay, so that's what you'll be able to see this evening. And, you know, when you look at the night sky, it's not static. It doesn't stay the same. So if I carry on, I'm, I'm moving time forward, you'll see how everything moves. So things rise in the east and they set in the west. So whatever you see, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whatever you see, it'll be changing position during the night. So later in the night, what time is that? Oh, it's quite, uh, well, uh, you'll be able to see Mars on the other side of the, sky uh, a bit later it's like a red it actually is a red color okay now the good thing i said you can you can change the date and the time so for example let's say i wanted to know what i might be able to see on christmas day <laughs> okay so i've changed the date to 25th of december now let me so I have to look around for, there is something, where is it? <laughs> of course, I can't find it now. Now that's typical, isn't it? Sorry, I hope this isn't making you sick. Have I gone to the right place? Twin oh, 24th. <laughs> no, it still should be there. 25th. Sorry about this. Uh, okay. I'm going to shrink the... Oh, that's very odd. Okay. Oh, is it? 
sorry, sorry. Let me change the time again. I think maybe it's later. Oh no, is it earlier? Aha, that's where it is, earlier. Okay. So on Christmas Day, I don't know if this probably, you probably can't, you might not be able to see this, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be very, very close together. So that'll be quite an interesting thing to look out for. So on Christmas Day, the evening, straight after sunset, you look out to the west and you'll still be able to see Jupiter and Saturn just like you can tonight, but they'll be very, very close together. Um, so if you're able to, um, you know, take a good picture, that might be nice. Now, sometimes this even shows you little things going past. What's that? So you see, you can actually also tell you satellites that are going past. So that was a little satellite there I just clicked on. I'm just I'll give you an eye on the time. Okay, so I think, uh, I think the uh, time might run out shortly. Is that right, Solomon? In which case, what you need to do is go to the second uh, link in the email that was sent to you. So it will probably stop as I'm talking. <laughs> but uh, right, what I'm also going to show you, you see how you can see all the, the stars? They said the whole stars upgraded it, so really? the time is unlimited. Why didn't I get that? Did you see that, Solomon? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, we'll keep going. If if it goes off, then there's a second link. But uh, oh, that's interesting. Okay, <laughs> very very interesting. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so all these dots are stars, and if you watch them every night, you'll find that they seem to be in patterns, like groups. And from ancient times, people looked at these patterns and said, "Oh, that looks a bit like a a fish," or "That looks like." you know, the god of the sun that we worship or something like that. So they're called constellations. And so it, when, it, you, when you draw, put these lines in, those are the lines that connect the stars in that group. And, oh, sorry. And you can also put the, the names on. There so they're are. quite odd names. Mm. But you might know the, the, uh, the zodiac the names of the zodiac, you know, Taurus and Gemini, those that they're, they're that's Leo. part of Cap Capricorn. Yeah, Leo's another one. Pegasus. <laughs> yes, and the idea is they they are from the ancient Greek legends, and they're supposed to represent different characters and uh, creatures and so on. And I can actually put on the pictures to show what they represent. So Capricorn is this very weird goat half goat half fish i don't know what that is but here we've wow. got <laughs> aquila which is an eagle we've got <laughs> cygnus which is a swan amazing we've got uh, cassiopeia who's a famous greek um queen what's she holding uh, uh, uh i'm I hope it is a mirror and not someone's head. <laughs> yes, maybe it's a mirror. I hope it's a mirror. <laughs> now, what's very interesting is that these legends are from the ancient Greeks, but, you know, all different civilizations around the world also looked up to the sky and have their own legends. And a very nice feature in Stellarium is that you can go to Star Lore and you can choose to look at different constellations. So if I go to say Arabic, you see now we have different constellations. So we've got the lady who has a chair, um, a hen. So they have a hen instead of a, a swan, dolphin, horse, you see. So, oh, they also have a goat with a tail. That's, that's bizarre. I don't know why everyone thinks there's a goat with a fish's tail, but anyway. <laughs> So very interesting. Let me go to, let's have a look at another one. Uh, maybe Chinese. See, Chinese have all sorts of interesting things. Jade ornament, um, wow. celestial drumstick, mortar and pestle, all sorts of things. So, so, so the constellations that we talk about, they have just been chosen really for convenience. So it's like if you're a professional astronomer and maybe one day you think you've discovered a new comet, you need to be able to tell people where in the sky that comet is. So 
the, those Greek constellations have been accepted by the International Astronomical Union. So it means that everyone can say, oh, I saw a comet and it was in the constellation of Taurus at such and such a position and everyone knows where it is. But it doesn't mean that those constellations are, you know, any better than the constellations that were decided by the Chinese or the Arabs or anybody else. It's just sort of a convenience. So it's quite interesting to look at all these different um, cultures. Okay. So that's um, a quick look at uh, Stellarium. There's a lot more that you can do with it, but you can get an idea. So, so the idea is you can, you know, you can go to a date that you want, to a time that you want, um, uh, and just see what's going to be in the sky. So you you can you get to notice. Oh yes, that those three bright stars that I normally see above the gate. That's part of Orion or whatever it is. It's a nice way to learn uh, uh, which stars you can see. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing again. Um, what else did we have on the... Oh. Sorry, just a moment. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, okay, so let me go back to the... Show, uh, that one. Oh, um, yeah, okay. okay, so that was a quick look at Stellarium. Um, now this diagram here is just showing some of the applications of astronomy tools. Now you saw that there are some huge telescopes um, and, and big groups of telescopes. So you have to think about the technology that goes into creating those. If you have to, you know, build an enormous mirror uh, and put it into space and stop it from freezing or burning or, you know, depending on where it's going, there's all sorts of technology you have to develop for that. And those technologies can then be used elsewhere. So it's surprising how much of things we use in day-to-day -day life come from astronomy or from space science. So this is just a few things like anti-glare filters and well, freeze-dried meals. Actually, these are from Apollo, from the Apollo uh, uh, missions that went to the moon. Um, you know, water purification, house insulation, you know, pacemakers that they put into people's hearts if they have a heart problem, all sorts of things. And there's a lot more, I mean, even really Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi and the internet came through astronomy and ast astronomy research. Um, and things like um, if you're ill and you need to have the, all these different types of scans that they call the CAT scan and MRI that um, are basically using different types of light beams really to examine your body. Those all come through astronomy. So really there's, I mean, it's it, in fact, my favorite one, I actually had a, a picture I should have shown you what, what's the favourite thing that everyone likes to do with their mobile phone? Take, yes. a sel take a selfie. That selfie is because of astronomy. The, the, the technology to put a camera, a tiny, tiny camera in your phone, that comes from astronomy. So you should thank astronomy for giving you the selfie. So there you go. So there's all sorts of uh, applications uh, from astronomy because of the incredible technology that's needed for these, these amazing uh, uh, telescopes and other machines. Ah, right, yes. Okay, so now this is what you have to do. So Stellarium, as I said, is software that you can download onto a laptop, but there are loads of mobile apps as well, um, like Sky, Safari, Google Sky, all sorts of ones, and, and a lot of them are free. So for your um, assignment, you're going to look for uh, an app called Skyview Light, okay? And it should be on both the Apple Store and the Android, the Google Play Store. Um, now, so again, remember, if, if, the, if you don't have your own mobile phone, please ask the person whose phone it is if it's okay if you download this mobile app, okay? Uh, so you're gonna download that. 
Um, I think there's a bit of set up to do. Uh, and and then, the, so the idea is when it's set up, you can point your phone up at the sky and it will tell you what's in the sky at that location. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, can you do that with the laptop? No. Oh. No. I mean, the laptop, you can have something like Stellarium that you can look at and go, oh, what's in the east? But I, I don't think there's anything on a laptop that you can, you know, you can point it at the sky. Mm -hmm. But the whole point about the mobiles is that you can take the phone and point it at the sky. But there's a laptop that you can do that. Well, well maybe there is. I don't know. I, 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 I've not come across it's that. But have a laptop. Yeah. So, Sarah. So, so if you have um, something like um, a laptop that can also serve like an iPad. Then you, when you take the other portion off, then you can do that. But I think the key idea is, so the Stellarium usually sits on a laptop, okay, or a computer. And you can actually use the various control to move around, which means you don't have to move your laptop or point it to any point in the sky. However, for the sky view, because it's just a phone, you can actually just point it to different areas and it can actually show you the, the various objects in the sky. I think I've seen it. Okay, so the idea is we'd like you to download that and set it up and then try it out. Uh, go outside and point it up at the sky uh, and, and note down what it is you've seen. Maybe, I don't know if you can take a screen, a, a, a photo. Will it? Yeah. Is it a must? Is it a, is it a must? You mean, do you, you don't have to. <laughs> if you're able to take a photo of what you, what the, the software no, is showing you. Is it a must to download the sky view? Well, um, this is what we'd like you to do. Um, okay. If, as I said, if it's not your phone and the person doesn't want you to download, then then don't download. Okay. Uh, if you can't find that particular one, then maybe you could try another one. It's it's not. I mean, these things are just for fun for you to try something out. So if you're not able to, don't worry. Okay, but it's just if you're able to, it's a, it's a, it's a bit. Okay, I'm done with my assignment. Um, <laughs> um, so if you have any questions, so don't worry, we'll get to the questions shortly. Okay, yeah. Okay, but I think isn't that are we at question? Oh, we're at question, aren't we? Is there anything else I need to? Because Solomon, this was Solomon's assignment. So Solomon, anything else <laughs> they need to know about the the assignment? Um, so I think that's all. Um, so with a sky view, you can actually take a screenshot of whatever that you see in the sky. I mean, if you point it and it shows you mass or whatever, you can just take a screenshot and you can send it to me um, just like, I mean, you usually do. And I think I would make an announcement about a WhatsApp group that we have created where you can send some of these assignments and then we can also get it. So I think Sarah, the, um, good good job. I think you, you, you have said it all. Okay, cool. So, Question time. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Is right. there anything? Um, well, so, I'll leave it um, up to Solomon to, to farm out the question. Yeah, so, um, so um, Sarah, thank you so much. So I'll just go to the chat. We have a few interesting questions. So let me just go to it. Um, so the first one is from the Akes. So he said, um, so the question was asked and um, about when you could just put in a specific date and it could just take you to, I mean, traveling to time, to Christmas time to show it. So uh, I think the question was asking how you did it and um, how does it now, and I mean, how are you be able to just move through time like that? Okay, <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, yes, I'm not really, I wish I could, could be a time traveler. I'm not really a time traveler, but this is really answering what, I don't know if it was you or one of the others asked. It's all to do with the maths and the laws of physics. So because we know how the earth moves, how the moon moves, how the sun moves, how all those stars move, we, we can predict where they'll be in the future. So that's how the, that's how the program, so that's what the program does. So it's not just looking at what the sky is like now. You can use those laws to say, oh, well, if the earth is moving like this, and that planet is moving like this, where will it be in a month's time? 
So it's the, it's the same logic that because of the, the, the laws of physics and the mathematical equations that govern how everything moves, that's why you can not only say what's going to be in the sky now, but you can say where those things will be in the future. So we're not really traveling through time. It's just that we can predict where things will be. And that's, that's part of science is, you know, being able to develop a law that not just fits your observations now, but can predict what will be happening uh, cool. at some point in the future. So, and that's why, you know, when there's a, we know things like when there's going to be a, an eclipse, they know hundreds of years in advance. You can look it up on the internet because it's all because of this maths and laws of physics. They can say there's going to be an eclipse on this day. It could be in 2000 years time and it'll be right within, you know, a few seconds. It's amazing. So it's all down to maths and physics. Yes. All right, um, Sarah, so thank you. Um, so Janice, I can see your hand is up, but there's one more question before I get to you. So if you could just hold on for us. Um, so the next one, I, I don't know if I should put it as a question or a request. So I said my birthday is on the April, uh, April 17th. Can I see how it will be or I mean the sky would be? And this is from Asante Kofi. Uh, yes, I, I mean... Do you mean, I mean, yes, you can do that in Stellarium. That's exactly what you can do. You can, I mean, that's a nice thing to do. What will the sky look like uh, on your birthday? Or you can even look at what was the sky like on the day I was born, the night I was born. So yes, you can put in any, any date. Uh, I mean, I mean, the dates in Stellarium are, I mean, it can go thousands of years back and thousands of years forward. There's, I don't know what the limit is, but, uh, but yes, you can do that in Stellarium. Okay, so... This is a personal question from um, the Aquas. So they're asking if I've ever gone to space. <laughs> With me or Solomon? Or either so of us? So it's privately to me. So Any of you. <laughs> Solomon, well, you are. So it's you, Solomon, have you been to space? So no, I've not. I wish. I actually want to one day. <laughs> yes, same right, so I, I think we've, 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 we've kind of, what can we say? We, we've, We've explored space from Earth. I mean, that's the amazing thing is that you can learn so much about space, about the different planets, about things that are so far from us, from right here on the Earth. Um, yes, I would love to go, just, I would like to go up into space enough to look down and see the whole Earth as a sphere. That's what I'd I'll love fall to down do. If I, go to, if I go to space, because you I'm won't. scared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so um, thank you. Um, so Janice, I think um, you can ask your question now. You can unmute and ask your question now. What is not kind of question? It's a statement. Yeah, yes, go ahead, Janice. I'm done with my homework. Uh, what the 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 sky view? Yeah. Already? E. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> okay, so you can send the thing to to Solomon. Okay. Um, yeah, the and then also, I, I think it will be if you're on WhatsApp when you join the group, you can just post it there. I'll just download it and I can um, access it and then I would send the replies and all those. Well, things. you have to send the groups now. No, no, no. So when you send the assignment, I mean, to the WhatsApp group, I just need your name attached to the image, and then um, yeah, I, I will know it from you, and then yeah, we can go on here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think there are no more questions in the chat. So I think now if you have any questions, um, now you can just unmute. Um, but first, raise up your hand so that I know you want to ask, and then I can allow you to go on to do that. So if you have any more questions, you can now unmute and then ask, or comment, or yeah, anything. So Janice, your hand is still up. Do you have a comment or question? Sorry. <laughs> No worries. Okay. Um, okay, so if you don't have any questions at the moment, I think we can go on. So the Arcus, sir. Eh? Arcus. <laughs> get it, get it right, Solomon. Get the name right. The Arcus. Good. Arcus. Okay. Do you have a question? Yes, please. Okay, please go on. I want to ask that, how do the people recognize how the patterns of the star and how they look like? 
That's another good question. Well, I mean, if you, you have to think that these people, this was thousands of years ago when we didn't have electricity. So at night, you know, every night you can look up and see the stars and you don't have all the light pollution. So you can see hundreds and hundreds of stars. And if you spend every night looking at the stars, you start to recognize groups. You can see that, oh, there's three stars in a line there or here there's four, a bit like a cross, or here's something else. You, you gradually start to just see those. Um, and then, and, and so, and it was people that, you know, that, that gave the shapes. It wasn't that, uh, what am I trying to say? You know, as, as time went on, people started, you know, they would give a name to that group. They say, oh, it looks like a cross, or it looks like a bowl, or it looks like something. And they would use, um, things that they were part of their stories and their mythology. So the Greeks had all these amazing uh, legends of, of gods and, and hunter, you know, Orion was a hunter and things like that. So they'd put those, th those were the sort of names that they gave. Um, I mean, what I always think is odd is that some of them just don't look like anything that they're supposed to look like. There are some that there's a Southern cross, which is a cross. The one that's Scorpius does look like a scorpion. But some of them, it's a few dots and you kind of think, oh, why, why does that look like, you know, the, the sea goat? But I don't know. Um, so, so it's when you look at the stars night after night, you do start to see patterns. And then it just came into kind of general usage that most people said, oh, yes, this looks like a fish or it looks like a sun or it looks like a something. And then those gradually got accepted. And I said, in different, different countries, different civilizations, they, they saw different things and gave them different names. All right, so, um, so great, thanks, Sarah. So I just want to add, um, so actually we have an activity when we talk about, um, so that's a topic in astronomy, which we would, or I think we might talk about, which is constellations, where we can ask you to just look at the sky and the various stars that you see, draw your own patterns, okay? So just to emphasize, so, back in the days so depending on what they, they saw in the sky they would actually imagine those various things to be different things to them so perhaps you can also come up with your own constellation in your own um, night sky so it's an activity we could um, do or something like that yeah. so um, yeah. i think there's a text in the chat so let me just read so um so this is from aka home it says about the astronomy tools i heard about the Astro, I think I got that now. Thank you. Um, so it says Astro, I don't know if that's Astrolab in a history book. What is it? Oh, an Astrolabe. Astrolabe. Um, okay. yes, that is an ancient instrument that I think was used for showing the positions of objects in the night sky. Um, I would have to look it up. I have heard of it. Uh, yes, I think it was an ancient. It's, it's like nowadays you can get something called a planisphere, which is like a paper. It's like a wheel. And as you move it around, it, it has all the constellations on and you can uh, move it to a particular date. There's another outer circle that has the date and you move it to a particular date and then it shows you what's in the sky. I think an astrolabe is something similar because I said these ancient astronomers were amazing. They spent years looking at the night sky and noting down what happened. And they started to recognize the patterns of, of the way the stars moved and then they could predict it. So, so um, I'll check on that for, for next week, but I'm pretty sure it's like an ancient kind of instrument that was used to show what was gonna be in the night sky on different dates. But that's a good question. We'll look it up. All right. So thanks, Sarah. Um, so the Akers have a question. <laughs> okay, so you can go on and unmute and ask. Okay, please. I want to know whether the Romans sat down and tried to figure out how the Roman heroes looked like or when the Roman heroes existed, they painted them or... Like, how did they find out how the Greek, those Greek legends looked like? Um, well, um, I mean, some of them are names of 
kind of gods that they used to worship. So it was, you know, they weren't real people. Uh, so they kind of made it up. Um, but remember the, the, you know, those patterns are not, um, it, I mean, it's not like a real picture or something. It's just, you know, a few dots that they can say, okay, here's the arms and here's the head and here's the legs. Uh, so it's not really showing what they thought that person or God really looked like. The Instellarium, you know, those pictures that came up, that's, I mean, that just comes from the software. The, the pictures are not exactly what the Greek people necessarily thought that, you know, Orion looked like. They're, they're, it's just some art that someone has, has created. Does that make sense? Right. Yes, it does, it does. Um, so thank you so much for your questions. Um, I think if we don't have any more questions, uh, we can move on to the next um, section or yeah, the next thing, I guess. Okay. Well, the next thing is over to you, Solomon. <laughs> but I'll ask you to move the slide for me. <laughs> okay. But do you want to go on to the... What right. do you mean? I should go to the next. No, I mean, I would, I would have to ask you to control the slide for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so thank you so much for listening to um, the section today. And I hope you had fun, which I really did. So thank you so much, Sarah, and everyone, everybody. So what we want to do, um, so it's now getting to Christmas. Um, I know it's been actually difficult for um, us to think of any form of celebration because of the whole pandemic. However, what we want to do is, so we want to um, roll this um, into our section. So I know a lot of you are, I mean, kids, I mean, you love these various superheroes and then um, perhaps you, you actually um, now will love astronomy so what we want to do, we will put um, some funny and then sometimes exciting text or images about astronomy. Um, this particular one you're seeing on your screen has to do with superheroes. So say you want a shirt to, um, to wear which has your favorite superhero. So let's say the Flash, Superman, Batman, and all those real texts. Or even your own personal text. You want to have a text um, on your shirt that says your name. Um, we actually would be producing some of those real sets so you can order and then have those various things. Um, yeah, and then have various, those real sets. So we actually have a lot of varieties. Sorry, He's can you right? So I'll answer the question about the price, but let me just talk about it so that you get, um, I mean, um, yeah, the various images. So to our left, you can see, um, so that's Robin, um, the red one, and it has your name. So you can put your name, Max, or Luke, or Henry, or whatever, under. And you could also just, like I said, have a specific one about something in science. So this white one is on um, Charles Darwin. So you can see his name there. We also have Franklin. We have Hubble. So the famous Hubble Space Telescope. And then, um, I mean, again, just relating to the astronomer, which helped um, in the field also. So you could have a shirt with something like this. You could also have something about smart girls. So. Um, if you're female, you want to have something like that, you could also have it like that. So Sarah sent a thumbs up. So Sarah, the next slide. Oh. All right. You could also have something like this about the um, solar system as balloons on this shirt that we can see on our on left. You could also have something funny like this. I need my space, something like that. And you could also put all the various planets and then the various, actually the celestial objects in the solar system also on your shirt. And like this, which you can wear to, let's say you want to go to the mall or something like that. So you can have all these real shirts. And we want to actually do these real things, not to just excite you about astronomy, but also um, kind of promote uh, or motivate you to learn more about space so that eventually you can take up careers, if not necessarily in astronomy, but you can do something uh, relating to astronomy in a way which actually will be able to help us all. As you have found out, selfies and all those real things are due to astronomy, which is um, something I'm sure you would always remember. So um, yeah, so this is something we want to do um, and I hope you like it. So if you want details on how to order, um, so let me just tell you how to order. So if you just need a specific shirt, let's say you have seen um, a design in one of these, uh, the various slides that we showed and you want to have a shirt like that. So you can just specifically tell me or tell us that specific one you want and we can do it. Also, if you want to customize your own, for example, you want to have um, a specific superhero, 
which maybe I didn't show up. So you can just tell me the superhero, we will find an image and then do the whole shit for you. So, um, so when that is done and you order and we do everything, if you can't come to the planetarium and you want it delivered to you, and we can also do that for you. However, if you are close by, you can always pass by and then take it. I think we will also be having, so, okay, so the, the Akes, please don't, don't worry. I'll give you time to ask your question about, um, I mean, what I'm talking about now. So I just want to add quickly that um, if you have, um, so actually we might be having um, an event at the planetarium. So if you are in a crowd or somewhere and you can come, uh, maybe we can get you ready by that time and you can pick it up. So, but all what I'm trying to say is... When is the event? So we are still planning. Probably I shouldn't have said it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But anyway, um, what, all what I'm saying is, if you are not close by and then um, you, want it, you want it to be sent to you, we can do that and you can also pick it up. Or perhaps if you have any event, you can come and then pick it up during the event. So that's just that for that. Um, so enough of the shirts. Now, uh, finally, um, before we end that, so the prize and all those various things, uh, because I'm sure most of you are kids which are watching now. Um, so if you tell your parents first and they, they are interested and they want to do all that, that's why we have formed the WhatsApp group or you have my telephone number there. They can call and I'll give you details about the prize and all those various things too. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, and then again, finally, so the reason why we do or uh, we want to do um, stuff like this, I've already mentioned to excite you and also have a little fun, but it's also what kind of help us to be able to do this, um, to keep running this show, because as you know, we do it free. So these various online sessions are free. You don't pay anything to join and you get to learn and then have fun also. So this will kind of also be able to kind of help us in a way to be able to keep this um, show going. So um, thank you so much. I think I just want to do a few more announcements and then we can now take questions about the set of the things that I mentioned. So the very first announcement is, um, so we have created a WhatsApp group where, um, so maybe you can't get access or your parents can't get access to the WhatsApp, uh, sorry, to the email always. We want to create a WhatsApp group, which we have already done. And we have actually sent the link in the email that actually told you about this section. I've seen it. Yes, so great. So you can actually tell your parents and they can join the WhatsApp group. Um, and then we can send details about the next section or even further um, information about the planetarium or anything exciting. Um, so yeah, I think that is that. Sarah, I don't know if there's anything I should add or mention. Uh, no, that's fine. I, I do still have the little fun fact if, if we, could, we could do that. Yeah, very yeah, quickly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so perhaps, okay, yeah, I think you should do the fun fact and that, and then we can take like a closing comment or questions from people. Please. Okay. About the, the shirt. How do you recognize the measurements of the person? So, um, so we know, we can actually tell. Um, when you order, I can show you various samples and then, um, yeah, you can actually get to decide which various ones you have. Okay, thank you. So we have specific shirts for kids, that's what I mean to say. So that's what we'll be using to do those designs. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm on to, okay, okay. So very quickly, because we've, we've, we've had quite a long time already today. Astronomy fact of the day. Dun, dun, dun. So... Uh, <laughs> Earlier on, there was a that thing I said that there's a picture of a thing that was a new kind of supercomputer, and I said it's part of something called the SKA. So, what is the SKA, and how much data will it produce? Since we're talking about computers, so the SKA stands for Square Kilometer Array, and it will be when it's built the largest telescope in the world. Um, it's it, it's an array. Remember, you've learned about a group of telescopes. Is it the one in China? No, no, no. Uh, remember, that was a single dish. The one in China is a single dish. This is an array. In other words, a collection of many, many dishes. And it will be the largest in the world. And there's going to be thousands of dishes in South Africa and also even more thousands in Australia. And it will, because it's has so many dishes, it will be the largest and the most powerful and the most sensitive telescope 
ever built, which is very exciting. So the bottom left, those are what the dishes will look like in South Africa. And they have some there already. And the ones in Australia are a different type. So they sometimes say it looks like a Christmas tree. It's just like a sort of metal pole. So, but they're both different types of radio telescopes or dishes or antennas. So this is a, a huge, very exciting project. Um, it's very exciting that the dishes are going to be on the African continent. And in fact, our observatory in Ghana is linked in a way to the, to the SKA, uh, which is also very exciting. So that's the SKA. Now, because it's so huge, the information that comes in, you know, everything now is digital. So the information is, is coming in is, is, you know, all this digital information. It's an enormous amount of information. How much information, how much data will the SKA produce? So this professor says that this telescope will generate the same amount of data in a day. Oh, hold on, my, my, something's in the way here, I can't see. <laughs> As the entire planet does in a year. We estimate that there will be more data flowing inside the telescope network than the entire internet in 2020. So think about the internet. Think about all the billions of people on the earth who use the internet every day. Think about all those people uploading their their videos onto YouTube and TikTok and Snapchat and all those things. Million, billions of people doing this every single day. Think of how much information that, that, that is. The SKA will produce that in a day. I mean, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. And that is why they have to build an entirely new type of supercomputer to be able to, to cope with it. So again, this is showing new technologies, new things are being built because of the uh, astronomy. So that, and that supercomputer that they build for the SKA, other people say, hey, yeah, that's a really good way to build a supercomputer. Let's build another one that we're gonna use maybe for medical research, you know, cause we need this really powerful thing to look at viruses or, or whatever. So, so yes, it's amazing. The SKA is gonna be an amazing instrument um, and it's, it's generating incredible technology. So that's our fact of the day. Da, da, da. And then, Great. oh, sorry, I forgot to do my exciting emojis. <laughs> now, the um, science news, actually it's a bit of a sad science news, a bit of a shame to, to end on a sad note. But, so remember you saw the China dish, that huge 500 meter dish, the largest in the world. Before that was built, the largest uh, observatory in the world was uh, this place called the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico and it was it's about 300 meters wide. Now sadly just the last few days there's been some damage some of these big cables here have snapped and I don't know if you can see there's actually a big hole here it's damaged the dish and and you can see some of the damage over here and the engineers have looked at it and said it's they they can't repair it it's too complicated and too dangerous and sadly they're going to demolish this amazing um piece of machinery which is i think it was built in about the 60s and oh. it's been doing a lot of research um but sadly it's it's now come to the end of its life and because it looks so amazing this is how it looked in its prime it's featured in quite a few films, including a James Bond film. And you guys, I know you're young, but you must have heard of James Bond. But one of the old films called GoldenEye, here's James Bond and the baddie having a big fight. And this was actually, it was, I think it's supposed to be up here. They were fighting. And eventually, of course, the baddie got, you know, fell down and fell onto this big dish. And, and died because he's a baddie. So the baddies have to die and James Bond has to win. So, so Arecibo is a very famous for science, but it's also quite, it's been in a few other films because it looks so spectacular. So sadly, this sometimes happens. It's, it's such a huge um, object, you know, sometimes, sometimes uh, this, this happens. Um, it's very sort of special technology and things. Sometimes you can't always repair it. So a bit of sad news, but still an interesting look at this, uh, amazing historic observatory and now i'm finished all right so sarah thank you so much um yeah i really enjoyed it i hope everybody also did so um i think if we have 
any more comments or questions on the last two sections that we did, the T-shirts and then the announcements and then finally the autonomy fact of the day together with the news. So any final comments? No, please. For that, okay. Could be okay. Okay, great. All right. Um, so, Sarah, I guess um, then that should be all because um, we have spent a lot of time, really. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. It's gone over. Oh, it's not out today. Pardon? Uh, stellarium. St stellarium. Yes, yes. Feel free to have a look at Stellarium. Um, I, 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 I was going to say, I think with the T-shirts, the, the I think, Solomon, you'll probably send an, an email, isn't it, with all the details, and then you can yes. talk to your parents or guardians if you're interested in that. They'll get all the details of prices and those kinds of things. Yes, yes. All right. Good. Okay, so thank you everybody for coming along. Thank you for all your brilliant questions. I love hearing all the questions. Keep asking questions. It's always very important. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Great. Bye. Bye, everybody.